Okay, so now we'll see how to compute the determinant of a square matrix algebraically. So if you remember, the determinant of a one by one matrix is simply the entry of that matrix. The determinant of a two by two matrix given by A, B, C, D, which we can denote either with D, A, T for determinant or replacing the square brackets around the matrix with vertical bars is simply A, D minus B, C. Another question is, well, since we know the determinant of one by one and two by two matrices, how can we move on to figuring out determinants of three by three matrices, four by four, and so on? So here's an example of a three by three matrix, and we'll ask, what is its determinant? Before we do so, there are two quantities that we have to define. The first one is the minor, the second one is the so-called cofactor. So we write M i j, and we'll see because for each entry of the matrix A, given the row and column position, there is a determinant attached to it. So M i j is called the minor, and what it is is the determinant obtained from A after we delete the ith row jth column. And we have the corresponding cofactor, which is simply negative one to the sum of the two indices, so the row index plus the column index, times the corresponding minor. And this quantity is called the cofactor. And that's it. So let's consider a few examples of minors and cofactors with this given matrix, and then with the concept of the cofactor, we can define determinants of any square matrices. So what if we ask M22? Well, this is the determinant, so we'll use here vertical bars, obtained from A, let's recopy A, so the first row 1, negative 5, 6, the second row 7, 3, 2, and the third row 1, Four, negative five. So as we said before, the minor is the determinant obtained from matrix A after we delete the ith row jth column. So here we delete the second row and second column. And now we have the determinant of a smaller matrix. You see the original matrix was a three by three, but if you delete one row, one column, you get a two by two matrix. And this is, at this point, easy. We have a two by two matrix. The determinant is AD, so one times negative five minus BC, one times six. So all we have is negative five, negative six, which gives us negative 11. And that is the minor to two for this matrix. What is the corresponding cofactor, C22? Well, this is negative one to the sum of the two indices, so two plus two, times the minor, m22. Two two. Well, negative one to the fourth is just one, so c22 two two here is simply m22, two two, which is negative one. And if you notice, well, it's quite simple, right? If the row index plus the column index is an even number, we have negative one to an even number, that's just positive one. So the cofactor is the minor. On the other hand, if the row index plus the column index is an odd number, negative one to an odd power is negative one, and the cofactor is simply the negative of the minor. So what about taking, say, M31, or no, 3, 2? Well, again, we start with the matrix A, so determinant of matrix A, so 1, negative 5, 6, 7, 3, 2, 1, 4, negative 5. And we delete the third row, second column. And we have the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix, 1, 6, 7, 2. Again, this is AD minus BC, so 1 times 2. 
minus 7 times 6. And so we get 2 minus 7 times 6 is 42, and we get negative 40. So the minor 3, 2 of matrix A is negative 40, and now well, what's the corresponding cofactor? C3, 2. Well, it is negative 1 to the 3 plus 2 is 5, negative 1 to the 5th power is negative 1, and so we get negative of the respective minor, but negative negative 40 now is positive 40. And this is the concept of the minor of a matrix and its cofactor. From this, we can now define the determinant of any square matrix, and here's the general definition. And you see that the cofactor is a is recursive in nature because we will build determinants of larger matrices, so 3 by 3 in this case, with determinants of smaller matrices 2 by 2. And so here's our definition. Let A be any square matrix, so A stays in N by N square matrix, then Here's a determinant. Determinant of A, so DT of A, equals. And here's where it's kind of strange. So pick any row of your choice for this matrix. So say we pick the ith row. So consider the entry AI1, AI2, up to AIN. So we take the entire row, we multiply each entry by its corresponding cofactor, so A I1 times C I1, A I2 times C I2, up to A I N times C I N. So for each entry in the ith row, we multiply the entry by the corresponding cofactor, and we add them up. And this will give us the determinant of A. And what's wild is, it doesn't matter which row you choose, you will always get the same value. So since we have an n by n matrix, i can be anything from 1 to n, so i could be 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n. And if you compute this, so multiply each entry of the row that you've chosen by the corresponding cofactor, and you add those up, you have the determinant. And it also works if you choose a column of your choice. So you could say, well, what if I pick the jth column? So I take A, 1, J, times its corresponding cofactor, C1, J, plus the second entry in the jth column, so A, 2, J, C2, J, and you keep adding those up for each entry up to the last one, which is A, nth row, jth column, times C, nth row, jth column. And this will also, and that's wild again, no matter which column you choose, this will always give you the same number. And this is how we find the determinant of any square matrix. And proving that this will always yield the same number for any choice of row or column is actually very, very uh, complicated. This would take us probably a month to prove, but we're not going to do that. So this is one of those times where you'll have to take this for granted. But let's actually go back to our original matrix and consider a choice of row and choice of column and see that in both cases we get the same answer. And if we pick a row, this is called cofactor expansion along the ith row. This is called cofactor expansion al along the jth column. So let's transcribe what the matrix A was originally and then find its determinant from a choice of row and choice of column. So our matrix A was the following matrix. It was 1, negative 5, 6, 7, 3, 2, and 1, 4, negative 5. So let's find the determinant with cofactor expansion along, say, row 1. And we'll now use the 
vertical bar notation, so determinant of a, vertical bar, 1, negative 5, 6, 7, 3, 2, 1, 4, negative 5. And we now expand the determinant with cofactor expansion along the first row. So we'll have a11 times c11 plus a12 c12 plus a13 c13. Well, we already have the three entries for a, right? a11 is 1, so all we have here is c11 plus a12 negative 5 c12 plus a13 which is 6 times c13. So all we're missing now are the three cofactors. Well, let's compute all three, and then we'll plug them back in. So C11. Well, negative 1, uh, sorry, negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 is positive 1. And we have now the cofactor being 1 times the minor 1, 1. So the determinant after we kill row 1, column 1, and we're left with the matrix 3, 2, for negative 5. So what do we have here? 3 times negative 5, negative 15. Negative 4 times 2, negative 8. And we get negative 23. And that's C11. What about C12? Well, same thing. Although we have to be careful here. Negative 1 to the 1 plus 2, that's 3. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times the corresponding minor. Here we delete row 1, but now column 2. So the matrix we'll have is 7, 2, 1, negative 5. So negative of 7 times negative 5, negative 35. Negative 1 times 2, negative 2. So what we have is negative, negative 37, positive 37. And now we have C12. We're missing our third and final cofactor, C13. 1 plus 1 3 is 4, 4 is even. Negative 1 to an even power is 1. And all we're left with is the minor M13. Delete row 1, column 3, and you have the matrix 7314. So we have again AD minus BC. 7 times 4, 28 minus 1 times 3, 3, and we get 25. So now we can conclude and substitute back in. So we have the determinant of A equals C11, that's negative 23, negative 5 times C12, which is 37, plus 6 times C13, which is 25. Let's multiply out and then simplify. So what are we going to have? Negative 23. 5 times 30 is 150, so negative 150. 5 times 7 is 35, so negative 35. Plus, oops, negative 35 plus 6 times 25, well 4 times 25 is 100 plus 50, 150. 150 minus 150 cancels and we're left with negative 23, negative 35, which gives us negative 58. So the determinant of A is negative 58. So if you think of this geometrically, if you were to multiply every point of a solid, because now we have a 3 by 3 matrix, so this will be a function of R, on R3, so if you have a solid and you multiply every point of it by A, you'll have a new solid, the volume will be 58 times bigger than the original solid, and there will be a reflection. So that's the determinant of A with cofactor expansion along Row 1. Well, let's pick now a column. 
So let's go back and say we pick column two. So once again, we are trying to find the determinant of A, so vertical bars. The determinant, well, the matrix A was 1, negative 5, 6, 7, 3, 2, 1, 4, negative 5, and now we use column 2. So this will give us A1, 2, C1, 2, plus A2, 3, uh, sorry, A2, 2, C22 two two plus A32 C32. Once again, we have all three values of A. So A12 is negative 5, so negative 5 C12. Plus A22 two two is 3, so 3 times C22. Two two plus A32, which is 4, so plus 4 C32. Now let's find all three cofactors and find the determinant. So C12. Well, again, negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 is 3. Negative 1 cubed is simply negative 1. So we get negative of the determinant of the matrix obtained from A after we delete row 1, column 2. Deleting row 1, column 2 gives the matrix 7, 2, 1, negative 5. This times this, so AD minus BC, negative 35, negative 2, negative 37 times negative 1 is positive 37, just as before. We already had found C12. Let's find C22 now. Negative 1 to the 4 is positive 1. Determinant obtained from A after we delete the second row, second column. So second row, second column gives us 1, 6, 1, negative 5. So what do we have? 1 times negative 5, negative 5. Negative 1 times 6, negative 6, so we get negative 11. And finally, C32. Negative 1 to the 3 plus 2 is negative 1 to the 5, which gives us negative 1. Determinant of the matrix obtained from A again after we delete the third row, second column, which gives us 1, 6, 7, 2. So we have the negative of 1 times 2, 2, minus 6 times 7, which is 42. So we get a negative of negative 40, which is simply positive 40. Now we can replace, we have all three cofactors. So the determinant of A is negative 5 C12, so negative 5 C12, that's 37, plus 3 times C22, negative 11, plus 4 times C32, which happens to be 40. Well, let's expand. Negative 150, negative 35, negative 33, positive 160. So what are we left with? Well, Negative 150 plus 160 is positive 10. Positive 10, negative 35 is negative 25. Negative 25, negative 33. And when you look at that, negative 25, negative 33 is negative 58, just as before. So the determinant is negative 58. And you could have tried on your own. Pick any other column of your choice or any other row of your choice use cofactor expansion, you will always find the determinant of A to be negative 58. But again, why this is true is a whole other question.